You are watching the Canadian Public. Hello, I'm François Caron, and sorry for the mess, I'm moving to a new apartment very soon. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the Apple iPad. Now I've never owned an Apple product before, although I have owned a few tablet-based PCs over the years with mixed results. So let's find out where the iPad fits in with all of this. Included with all versions of the iPad is a power adapter, an interface cable, and a sleeve containing reference cards, warranty information, and Apple stickers. The iPad is available in your choice of 16, 32, or 64 gigabyte configurations, either with or without 3G support. All models include a 1 gigahertz Apple A4 processor, a 9.7 inch 1024 by 768 pixel resolution capacitive touchscreen, GPS, and both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. The iPad is a beautifully designed handheld device with a low reflective screen packaged in a single piece brushed aluminum shell. The iPad is equipped with a headphone jack, microphone, light sensor, a screen on off switch, screen rotation lock switch, volume control, mono speaker, accessory port, and the Apple Home button. The 3G version also includes a slot for the micro SIM card. The iPad doesn't include any built-in USB ports or SD card slots, or even a webcam, which might not be a bad thing considering the iPad will most likely be used on the person's lap, with the webcam looking up their nose, or worse. The on-screen keyboard's excellent ease of use is ruined by its lack of frequently used keys on the primary keyboard layout, forcing you to switch over to the secondary layout just to add something as simple as, for example, an apostrophe. The keyboard layout is also missing a delete key and a set of arrow keys, forcing you to move the cursor with your finger. External keyboards, both wired and wireless, are supported, but that would mean one more thing to carry around with you. The Wi-Fi connectivity is very reliable, with no apparent issues with any of my personal wireless networks or my regular hotspots. Virtual private network support, however, is limited to very basic protocols with no plans from Apple to support alternate and more secure VPN solutions. Optional accessories for the iPad include docks, keyboards, VGA adapters, and carrying cases, but there are a few problems. The Apple-branded docking station only works in portrait mode. The USB and SD memory card kit is limited to transferring only picture and video files and the VGA adapter cannot be used to clone your iPad screen on an external display. Third-party accessories such as a small footprint aluminum stand do a much better job at filling in the Apple quality accessory void. You can also use non-iPad specific accessories such as this document holder, this netbook bag, or this coat hanger. The iPad includes basic built-in apps such as a web browser, email client, picture viewer, notebook and agenda, maps and navigation, shopping portals, and an assortment of media playback apps. The iBooks app, which must be installed separately, has an excellent user interface with quick access to all pages and includes a growing selection of paid books available from major publishers, as well as a wide selection of classic literature now in the public domain. While some apps demonstrated a high level of quality, other apps behave erratically or nag you with a few too many ads. Even the so-called productivity apps had enough negative feedback to discourage me from buying them, the most common complaint being the lack of compatibility with Office Suite file formats. Even the iPad's built-in apps had issues. The web browser does not support Adobe Flash, the email client only supports one signature, and the images are not sorted in alphanumerical order, screwing up your slideshow. Even worse, Apple's wacky approval policies have already resulted in the banishment of apps such as alternate media players, desktop widgets, and network tools, severely crippling the iPad's full potential. 
but my biggest annoyance is the iPad's almost complete lack of multitasking capabilities, which can be catastrophic if while closing one app to retrieve something from another app, you lose all of your unsaved data. For now, only the email client and music player have any multitasking capabilities whatsoever. Apple's somewhat clumsy iTunes software takes care of backing up your iPad, including your data, your purchases, and your personal settings, as well as transferring to the iPad any pictures, music, or movies you wish to bring along with you. Other file types can also be transferred to the iPad, but only if a compatible app is already installed on the device, and the app supports file transfers over USB via iTunes. The iPad's multi-touch capacitive touchscreen is highly responsive and accurate with excellent contrast and color fidelity. However, fingerprint buildup can still be a problem, so wash your hands first and stay away from food. The sound quality from the mono speaker is pretty impressive, with the aluminum casing acting as a speaker box, giving the slightly tinny sound a bit of a punch. Unfortunately, the iPad's media playback capabilities are limited to audio and video formats that Apple either owns or controls, with absolutely no support for some of the other, more popular formats. And while the iPad is perfectly capable of playing successive audio files automatically, it can't play video files in sequence even from within a playlist. This is very annoying when you want to watch a television series and you have to press play between each and every episode. On a more positive note, the Media Playback Battery Rundown Test resulted in a whopping 10 hours of video playback time on the fully charged battery, which is truly a blessing during long trips as long as you remember to press play. The battery recharge time is about 4 hours with the 10 watt power adapter and over 13 hours via a computer's USB port, but only when the iPad is not in use. Otherwise, the iPad will take twice as long to recharge off the power adapter and won't recharge at all off the USB port. Despite having no webcam, no flash, no USB ports, and no memory card slots, the Apple iPad is a beautifully engineered and highly versatile personal computing device with none of the headaches that have plagued just about every single tablet PC released in the last 20 years. Unfortunately, the highly paternalistic and condescending operating system has reduced the iPad's capabilities down to the level of an ad-supported content delivery appliance, which is fine if surfing the web, looking at pictures, playing games, listening to music, reading books and magazines, and watching videos are all you want to do with the thing, and pay between $500 and $900 for the privilege. But if you need to get some real work done, you know, the kind that helps pay the bills or graduate from school. Then you'd be better off with a netbook computer at half the price. For now, I'll keep the iPad. It's already proven to be pretty useful in some rooms in my home, and the upcoming fall release of iOS 4 might correct some of the device's more serious drawbacks just a few months before Apple announces the upcoming launch of iPad 2.0. That's it for the Apple iPad. I'm François Caron, thank you for watching. Maybe I should try jailbreaking this thing.